welcome listener to another episode. In today's story, we follow a young man whose day goes from bad to worse. In an attempt to escape his mother's abusive and drunk boyfriend, and after a breakup with a girl who truly understands him, he heads for the beach in search of the one other person who can help him when he's at his lowest. And he's definitely at his lowest. Little does he know, however, that with this one decision, he is in over his head. So, grab a drink, pull up a chair, and listen while I tell you a story. Today is Siren. Welcome, this is Listen While I Tell You, Behind the Words, where we discuss our most recent uh, Listen While I Tell You episode. This week, it was Siren, written by my wife on stage left we had a discussion about whether or not we had to figure out what which is stage left so that's stage left you're right um and uh she wrote siren and then i narrated it we thought we'd just get on here and just kind of talk about our experience with this process so far it's new to us uh so we just kind of want to like detail beginning to end and see where it, where it takes us so before we get started do you have any uh fun things that have happened this week um no, in fact, um, I'm in the depths of despair because Aaron Carter is dead. Ah, yeah. I like yeah. I baked cookies about it. I don't experience I emotions. Love candy. Oh, mm, too soon. Um, I it wasn't his only work. By we, the way, we we did do something pretty significant. We voted. Oh yeah, I'm like, did we? We did vote. We did vote. We voted by mail, so it didn't feel. Well, you voted by mail. I, I had, like to I, vote my man. I, I don't I like going in. places. I like going in because like you meet all the old people and they're all like really nice. You know what I mean? So we live in Florida. We don't get to meet old people that often. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yes, if you haven't listened to the story, please go and listen to it uh, before listening to this or watching this because there are spoilers. So before, so let's go ahead and get, get started. Um, so first of all, like what inspired you to, to write this story? Um, several things. So um, just kind of, I love the notion of like a scary mm -hmm. mermaid. Um, and I think to, you know, when like the popular culture, like mermaid is usually like, like Ariel or like some right. knockoff version of the little mermaid. Mm -hmm. um, Wiki watchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's right up the street um and so i was like okay um i knew when we were first started talking about like potentially doing this particular podcast where i like i wrote something and you narrated it we knew that we wanted to do something like kind of spooky and i was like all right um i don't like that mermaid lore kind of comes from like a dark place like the original hans christian anderson the little mermaid is like i remember the first time i read that and i was like this mm -hmm. is not the story <laughs> that i have come become accustomed to because where are the seashells where's uh -huh. flounder where's i need talking animals she doesn't comb her hair with a fork one time um no singing no singing um and then I also just really like the siren is kind of like a mythical creature. Like I like again, I I love a good scary mermaid. And I remember um, my favorite part of the Odyssey is like the siren chapter. Like I remember that when I first read the Odyssey, genuinely terrifying me. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to explore a scary mermaid story um with kind of some nods like there are nods like to both the odyssey and han christian anderson's the little mermaid mm -hmm. like penelope's last name um is anderson because 
of Hans Christian Andersen. And then, um, like, Psy, he literally has one eyeball. And mm-hmm. so he's the Cyclops. Um, Penelope is obviously a character in the Odyssey as well. And then even, um, like, Bo is my personal favorite because Bo is, like, French for boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And Penelope in the Odyssey has all these suitors that, like, her husband's, like, disappeared for, like, you know, right. at this war for, like, a decade. And, like, all these men start, like, sniffing around. And she's, like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, I mean, um, names, names are typically significant to a story and writing in general, right? Usually. I, I mean, I love a good, um, I love a good, like, when I can look up what a name means and it, like, makes that character more important. Like, I know... Margot in uh, Paper Towns. Mm -hmm. Her last name is Spiegelman. And a Spiegel is like a looking glass and a mirror. And a lot, like the whole point of that book, which also spoilers again, um, is that uh, like Quinn like sees more of him, like his version Mm -hmm. of Margot than actually seeing Margot herself. And I love that her last name like literally means like mirror. Right. Um, so yeah, I love a good like name and I try to always give like my places and my, um, like characters, significant names if I'm, if I can. Right. Um, so yeah. And then the other kind of, um, backwards inspiration or kind of like, I guess the theme that I was going for, um, or like, you know, like Hans Christian Andersen, like fairy tales typically have like a moral, um, you know, there's a point to like reading a fairy tale, like, you know, not to go into the woods by yourself or whatever. Um, and for me, um, like I've always worked really closely with kids and kind of the story that gets told a lot is that like, like a man as a predator for like young females. Mm -hmm. And that's like something I experienced in high school. And, um, like I had teachers that were inappropriate with me and I, and at the time I remember thinking like, we're friends like Mm -hmm. which is such a screwed up thing to think when you're like a 17 year old girl and you're i'm like well this this like male teacher is my buddy right like and so that (laughs) i don't know what that look was for um but i remember thinking that and like now that like i'm an adult and i work with children i'm like oh my gosh like i was in danger And I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to tell that story because there's, um, you know, that it happens to boys too. And one of the most significant um, cases of like a teacher losing their job here, like locally or semi-locally, it's in a few cities over, was a female teacher that like went after teenage boys. And I'm like, okay, well, like this is a story that doesn't get told enough. What would be a good vehicle for this? Oh, a scary mermaid. Siren. Yeah. So is the story, say the story moving on. I know mm-hmm. right now the story doesn't have, it, it ends with him going into the water, but a continuation of the story, is it, is that going to be the broader message? Is that going to be the broader story? I have to find out. I have to find out. <laughs> I have okay. to find out. <laughs> right. we, I was just listening to a Neil Gaiman um, <clears throat> interview and he was talking about like selling stories and people asking like, oh, what happens next? And he's like, well, if you pay me, <laughs> we'll both know <laughs> yeah i guess that's true um so uh go contribute to our patreon which we have not <laughs> right. created and um i i mean what so what do you think though uh are you just going back to the ending because the ending i also in a short story not in a novel if i've spent enough time with a novel to like really be in it and it ended the way this ended i would like do the whole like throwing it out the window like right because um, it, it it ends kind of abruptly I think it's more of a, but a I like prologue. An, yeah, I like an to, open-ended. Yeah, to I think it's a prologue to a larger story that has you have yet to write. That's that's my thinking. And like you and I, we discuss a lot of our time. I was going to say spent, you maybe have some insider information. Yeah, we spend a lot of time discussing possible stories. We do that we do. quite often, and this is the story's no exception. We've talked a lot about how it might move forward. And like one of those ideas is kind of to maybe uh, the siren's a bit of a red herring or maybe there is specifically something to do with Penelope being 
involved later on being more of the central character but then we get a little bit into like like i'm not a big fan of like jk rowling being like oh my last harry potter book was finished dumbledore is gay it's like where do you where right well do you, you have say the, that like the, the the idea of killing the author yeah which, so i don't want to get too much into like things that like haven't been but like kind of let's say that you all that you have is the story like mm -hmm. you've listened to it um or you know someday when we have our website up and this is like in text um yeah. like out in the world um or you know the book deal shows up um what like how do you feel like the story ends does is sailor dead is he alive what do you think i mean i kind of like the open ended endedness mm -hmm. of it in a short story, I do too. I like yeah. I like ending a short piece of fiction I, I, myself. I think the personally. short stories in general function very well being just a snippet of time. Mm -hmm. Not having too much information. And I think, uh, you know, not to go off on too much of a tangent, but Netflix has done some really incredible shorts that uh, have full, complete stories and have an entire world that you can imagine. And it's just a small little snippet mm -hmm. of that world and i think i think short stories function pretty much the same way yeah and i what i like about a short story is there's a lot of room to put your self in mm -hmm. text um and that you it's also a, like a challenge as a writer um to kind of give the reader all the information they need but not too much because the short story you are working with only, yeah. you know, like in pretty narrow, um, in a pretty narrow, like, what am I trying to say? Like, you only have a certain amount of words. Right. And also, I feel like people don't read, and this is maybe, this is maybe not true. This is maybe just like my, um, like, hot take from like my group of like reader friends. But I feel like people don't read short stories the way that they maybe used to. Which is a shame. I mean, one of my favorite pieces of text is um, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Mm -hmm. I mean, just anything. Shirley Jackson, honestly. But um, she... That's like a... It's like three pages if you print it out on, like, printer paper. Um, and it's... I mean, I... Again, I remember the first time I read it, blew my hair back. Like, I was right. like, oh my gosh, that this is what's... <laughs> And this is what's happening. And that's a really powerful piece of text. But you and I for talking about the lottery, I see that whole town. I see like everything. And she never really says she doesn't give you that much of a description. Yeah, we've been wanting to do this like short story, uh, whimsical short story format mm -hmm. for a while now. And we're just we're finally doing it, which I'm really excited about. So all of the stories that we have lined up are going to be this same like whimsy fantasy um yeah like not the quite word, like, like when we first started outlining this the word that i wrote down in like the margins of my notebook uh, was i think otherworldly yeah so not quite as like blatantly sci-fi so, well it's not goosebumps, it's not it's, goosebumps i wasn't even going goosebumps i was going um <laughs> goosebumps are great <laughs> well i was going like the twilight zone and maybe that yeah. is a little more because i know some episodes of the twilight zone are like properly like fantastical but then some end in like my favorite ones of the twilight zone are when they end and you're like i don't know i don't yeah. know if that was i would say that uh I would say the Twilight Zone has been a big inspiration for mm -hmm. this so far. I, I agree. And like, I think that's what I like about the way that I ended, not to like, you know, that's what I like about what I wrote. Um, but the way, like, Seren either way, Serena's the villain. Like, she's bad news. Um, I almost said bad news bears, which <laughs> I've never once in my life said mm -hmm. bad news bears. Um, no, but she's she's a predator whether you think she's like a mythical being mm -hmm. or not and um you know there's a lot about her that's kind of like shrouded in mystery like you know and i think that's not atypical especially like in the south when because a lot of people like especially in florida like move here from other places yeah. and you i mean you could 
be anyone and it doesn't really matter and anyone honestly with some of the stuff that like goes on in the south like you'd believe it yeah um so what so what do you think so go ahead so tell us a little bit about how what your your writing process was for for like this particular story um so again i have like more of a like poetry background um and short writing short stories are something that I've like kind of come back to um and I'm really enjoying um which I know is not what you asked but that's what I've said Mm now um for me this and poetry it was a little like this especially when I was doing it like at university where some short like forms of prose like kind of just like descend upon you and it's almost like they like come out of heaven like shrink wrapped in plastic and you just kind of like take off the packaging and you're like oh here's this and this was a little like that like I um I had Sailor in my head as this kind of like teenager who's just he's just struggling and through like no fault of his own really and I think to me anyway like I feel like he has a pretty good attitude about the situation he's in Mm -hmm. you know he has an alcoholic mother an alcoholic step boyfriend or whatever his mom's yeah guy or his mom's living dude um and he kind of in like the last year has like he's got this like popular girlfriend that he like genuinely likes and i feel like like i like sailor i think he's a good kid you know i don't think he's like with penelope because she's like comes from a wealthy family or because you know she's like hotter like i think he genuinely likes her as a person um and coming from a very small town where there maybe weren't as many kids who were, you know, doing things like reading Shirley Jackson short stories on their lunch break. You know, I had one of my best friends like used to go and like smoke pot in his car at lunch every day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I think um, like you kind of find your people and you kind of like connect with people. I'm answering. I'm not answering your question. <laughs> at all um so I I think I think Sailor's like he's a good kid and he's like really intelligent but he's having a hard time and I think you see this a lot if you work with children like the kids who are genuinely like like really would be successful if they had like some different like kind of influences Mm -hmm. or resources and you know I have like kids that I've worked with before that I can tell that like they didn't sleep the night before and how are you supposed to be at your best Anyway, um, for this, I mean, it was really easy. I had Sailor in my head. I had his voice. I could see him. Um, I kind of like understood him. He's kind of, he's got a little bit of an attitude, like he's got an attitude, um, but he's like good hearted and he's kind of just reacting to his environment. And then I was like, okay, so I have this person and I knew kind of the situation. I knew I wanted a teenage boy to kind of be like in the one in danger from like an older woman and Serena's not like that much older. I think she's like in her mid twenties or something. Um, allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly may, I mean, is she, I don't know. You tell me this. She, once the story immortal. goes into the world, I feel like it belongs to the readers, but, um, yeah, I supposedly, I mean, maybe she's 25, maybe she's like a thousand. We'll see. Um, yeah, but so- she, she's old enough. Like she's, the dangerous one. So I had that kind of plot and I, I actually knew I wanted the story to end more than where I wanted it to go. And typically that that's not usually I, I have the beginning of a story or I'll have the middle, but I almost never know the ending. Yeah. Um, I wrote a novel that's not been published. It's like sitting on a Google doc in my mm-hmm. laptop and that I was surprised I was yeah. writing it and I was like, oh, the, I'm writing the ending right now. It's the book is ending right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's uh, just coming out of my fingers. To, to that, to that um, it's probably worth mentioning that you're not just some random person who's writing. I am just like a random you. person who's writing. <laughs> I'm a random human. Just a random human. I just No, like you have, <laughs> you education, you have an me. educational background. You've won awards for your writing. You're more of a poet. Uh, it's, in your previous writing. Did you almost say historically? Historically. <laughs> oh my God. How how old do you think I am? <laughs> Immortal. <laughs> Immortal. You are older, so. Oh, wow, that's true. Anyways, so you do have a lot of writing experience. I, yeah, I didn't just 
be like, hey, I'm going to cough up a short story mm-hmm. and we're going to make a podcast. Um, now, me, I have always wanted to do like voice acting and audio narration. And this is my introduction to that. I have mm-hmm. no experience yeah, doing that. Yeah, it's his that. first rodeo. So, so. I, will ha- I will say it was very hard. This was a lot harder narrating this Mm -hmm. than i had anticipated uh first of all reading and talking at the same time is mind-blowingly difficult Mm -hmm. you like you can do it kind of organically if you're just reading mindlessly from from a sheet of paper but to do it in a way that's got character to your voice to actually perform it yeah well and that's the thing too because i had done i'd messed around a little bit with theater in high school and like you said like i have a writing background i have like i have like higher education and i wasn't a straight up english major for a while and i still i ended up minoring plus a little bit and but it's interesting to me like because with especially poetry um like i've been part of like poetry performances that other um like reading works that other poets have written and so I kind of am used to like having notes and like understanding how to read for an audience because you have to like slow it down you have to use different voices and for you and I remember like you were like it's gonna be fine like it's gonna be easy peasy and it I'm took like, me probably okay 10 solid tries to mm-hmm. get it and more okay another thing is is that I'm recording it and so to figure out a way to record it and be efficient at that and not spend so much time editing and stuff like that. And my last, my last attempt recording it, um, the one we used, I finally figured out a process for recording mm-hmm. that was conducive to my ability to basically read a sentence, uh, record that one sentence, stop the recording, and then st- begin the recording and record the next sentence, which I set up the hotkeys on the keyboard in a way to where it was like really quick. So it was like record, stop, record, stop, record, stop. And it allowed me to, when I messed up, I could, I also set up another hotkey where it just automatically deleted and moved the cursor back oh, cute. so that I could just hit that button boop, and then go back and start recording, record that line. And I was getting frustrated initially because I would mess up a line and then I'd say it again, I mess it up and I mess it up and I get in my head because I knew that, all right, when I go and record this or go to edit this, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to listen to myself say the same line over and over and mm. over again. And mm-hmm. uh, it's, I, it was too much. It's funny to so, me because that usually it's like flip flopped for us for one. Like you are like the confident, like I've got this one and I'm the one who's like rereads a sentence i've written and i'm like i mm-hmm. don't know anything i need to delete i need to actually throw my computer away um after lighting it on fire i need to not only stop writing but also probably stop speaking because i don't know how words work and you're the one who kind of comes in and you're like it's okay yeah it's all yeah. right no you're like really good at this i th- i think not that you i mean you're biased like mm-hmm. um but no. it it was like different and it was almost like the process it, it like paralleled like the writing process i think is like you're in a way that i wasn't expecting yeah i really had to figure out my my process for this it was it was a learning like i yeah. i was learning this well and you also i feel like went pretty hard i mean you like i studied how to put on a southern accent <laughs> so that i can do a, an appropriate i think your southern accent dialect. is a little more like it's like Southern gentlemanly. It's not, it's not the accent. And this is the other thing. Like, it's not, this was a learning experience for me. Cause that's, that is not sailor's voice in my head, which like you were very cheap. So like, I'm not complaining, <laughs> um, but he, like, you maybe have a deeper voice. I yeah. mean, he's also like 18 and you were mm-hmm. like a little past that. I don't know how um, much my voice has changed though, since I've been 18. Yeah, but um, it still it wasn't like how I pictured it, and like the way that you read certain things, it was so. It's hard because as someone who's like written a lot, but 
I haven't been like, I think, you know, I had like one published poem in like a university magazine that like, I don't even know if it ever went to print. Um, to like, I know that when I like put pieces of writing out into the world that they kind of belong to whoever's reading them and that I can't sit there over everyone who's ever going to listen or read this. Like, I can't sit over their shoulder and be like, no, he says it this way. Right. Um, or even like some, you did some interesting like additions to some things um, mm -hmm. in your rereading of it. Um, and it was like very, it was very interesting to me to listen to how it sounded in your head. Because I know how it sounds in my head. And I think you had kind of a slower kind of like build up. Um, and like in my head, like the tensions like were higher and I kind of like felt it go faster. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, it, it took some learning to figure out how to do the, the voice and then to do the, to do the accent. It took me several tries. It's, I mean, so it's that, acting. Yeah. But it's not just, I, I, I realized that I couldn't just do a Southern accent mm -hmm. because if I did a Southern accent, for one, it was distracting to just be listening to the audio. Mm -hmm. um, and second, to, I mean, people are listening to it, so they need to be able to understand the words that you're saying. Yeah. And so I had, basically what I had to do was have the the vowels have a southern accent, mm -hmm. but the consonants keep a regular accent. Because yeah. if the consonants had a southern accent to them, mm -hmm. um, it, it, the the words were hard to understand. Mm -hmm. So I had to change my southern accent to be like a a hybrid, so that yeah. it it sounded right. So that's why, like when I do the, like the actual voices, mm -hmm. they have like a more real southern accent. And to I think them. that works better too, because again, to I mean, I never write something thinking about it being read out loud because that's not typically how like I consume word like written mm -hmm. word um i'm much more of like a physical reader than i am an like auditory reader yeah um not that i mean audiobooks are reading like i firmly believe that but i tend to like actual actually like physically read text and so like how it looks on the page is important to me and um I, you don't think as you're writing or I, I mean i do now it's been really great um that like how for someone who's just listening to it how are they going to know when certain people are talking and you doing this or like even when something especially for sailor because he's very like inner monologue like he's wordy he yeah. like thinks a lot he's like constantly thinking stuff and he kind of responds sometimes to things in his head but he doesn't actually say them because he's like a smart bleep yeah. I guess we can, I mean, there are curse words in the, I guess we can curse on this one. Um, so another thing that I, I was trying to figure out the best way to do it was uh, Sailor himself mm -hmm. speaks for other people in this. He does speak for other people. So I elected to do, instead of doing the voices of the other people, like when he's basically talking about, oh, Penelope wouldn't he say puts words, and, prostitute she would say escort yeah and so i was like and did you notice he, would, he does it and he even does it with his mom like i'm so like impressed that you noticed that yeah. um he like with his mom he as he's like at the beginning of the story when he's like leaving his apartment he's kind of gotten into this like scuffle with her his mom's boyfriend um and he's like whatever f you i'm leaving for the night um, and he storms out and he thinks about waking his mom up to tell him, tell her that he's leaving. And he's like, I know she'll freak out if I'm not here, which I mean, I feel like that, like if I, which I had a very different upbringing that I, I'm way more of a Penelope. Right. <laughs> like, um, but like if I had just like left my house and, and my mom woke up and didn't know where I was, she would freak out. Even we had, I grew up on a horse farm. And even if I went out and fed the horses like earlier than I normally did, she'd be like, where are you? Where did yeah. you go? Like, um, so, you know, some of it's probably accurate, but like he puts words in Serena and Penelope and his mom's mouths at multiple times 
that I mean, because I'm I'm all for like a flawed character. And I feel like that's like he's an 18 year old boy, like he's going to be misogynistic. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good point because he he does speak for other people quite a lot in this. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a very that's a very teenager thing to do. Actually, you know what? I work with grown adults who, who talk like that all the time. That's just a human thing to do. Yeah. So. Well, and he's I think it's like it kind of like is one of those things about his like character that. Like he's got anxiety from his environment mostly. Yeah. Um, and like I think he's stressed all the time. Um, and and when like boy should be like sailor, you are in danger and you don't even know. Mm -hmm. Um So what is uh but we'll we'll end it here. What is uh what's your favorite line or section from the story? Oh man. Um I actually I'm so I'm the one that like came up with the talking points that we should hit and um i was not really pre I, okay i'm 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 not going to lie i'm pretty proud of this one and that's atypical for me i'm usually like don't read anything i've written um yeah but like i feel pretty good about this one i'm not going to lie um and there's um when Sailor is, like I said, we like we were just talking about how he was leaving. Um, he has a line, and now I'm I know it's on the page I'm looking at, and I can't. Oh, it's right here. Um, he's leaving, and he's trying to decide if he's gonna wake his mom up to tell her that he's had it out or not. And then he's like, you know, but I he like doesn't stop. He keeps walking, and he it says, "I don't stop. I don't wake her up. Don't say bye." I won't even think about her again until the water's over my head. And by then it'll be way, way too late. And that's it. I like that because even though it's in present tense, it still gives you that like, I mean, in this, it's pretty soon. It's like three pages in and you're like, oh, something bad is going to happen. And I love, I guess when I love when other writers do that and I felt like I pulled it off. Yeah, you do some really good foreshadowing in this. So my favorite really is this first line yeah i love i love the first line sai hits me for the last time on a random tuesday night mm -hmm. like i think that's a great first line so i think that tells me a lot about <laughs> just like the character's attitude mm -hmm. and obviously it's foreshadowing that mm -hmm. something like why is it the last time and why is it a random tuesday night like there's a lot mm -hmm. there's a lot that's going in like why is the story starting on a random tuesday night yeah so, well and two i i love a story especially a short story that um it's just an average day and then it's not yeah i think that most people's most traumatic days or most memorable days i went with traumatic because that's kind of how the story goes that's, yes this, this uh, is very traumatic it, they are just like random days that occur in someone's life and it's like wow the something pretty amazing or something pretty terrible yeah. happened so that's that's I think very realistic uh and that's in that respect. And two um like not this is not any one line but and something that ended up being deleted and then put back in several times where I I have a lot of um like water based metaphors um and like there's something about like his like relationship with Penelope being dead in the water or something like that. And, um, yeah. and Serena at one point, like is like walking in her hair. He says it's fishtailing. Mm -hmm. And I like wanted to kind of just it, like those for me were almost like breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I don't want to get too much into this because I believe in like, if you read a story and you have, a narrative or a reaction or you feel some type of way or you decide how it ends like then that's like that's it's not my job to tell you yeah what to I, think I about agree it with that. um it, but speaking, i do think like i mean in my head like my head canon is that like serena is a siren like she's legitimately um like this like creature uh -huh. um i i think in my head she's canon. kind of she's lilith a little bit or not lilith um who's the not that evil 
demon who's like in love with Sam on Supernatural. Oh. She's like the blonde girl in the like the first couple seasons she's in. And then she the girl who ends up marrying Jared Padalecki plays her and like Yeah. But like you know she like body jumps yeah. a little bit. That was kind of like what I was picturing. So my so my head canon for Serena is that she is a siren. Mm -hmm. But something I I kind of want her to have it's like she has a, a like a moral reason doing what she does, mm -hmm. whether or not she actually kills him or not, or because we, well, that was what I wanted to talk to you about. Too. I hold on because okay. I there's a there's a lot to unpack. First of all, so there are people that go missing, right? And she's the last person to have been with them. Yeah, it is she actually is it just a coincidence? Also, this is just me because I I am a cop, so I was thinking about this as I was mm -hmm. so. At the very, very end, there are lights and sirens, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I love that you used the word sirens. Mm -hmm. I thought that was great. And whenever I read that, mm -hmm. where he says sirens, mm -hmm. I did not read it necessarily as being police, police sirens. sirens. I read it as being sirens, like like Serena is a siren, mm -hmm. right? Because he so hears singing yes. right before it all goes yeah belly up but he, he another... does see red and blue lights and stuff so assuming that it is police they wouldn't be like responding that way to penelope calling it well yeah and, and they also wouldn't get there more than likely that fast so my question is what is ha what are the cops showing up for like what are they really there for well and, and then are they even showing up or are they just driving past and they the might road be just driving going past? somewhere else yeah well and i do th so and it says that like guys who come off of like these fishing charters like i do think serena i don't think she would say that she's doing anything wrong um and she i i don't know like this is where it gets a bit muddy for me even though i'm the one i know it's my fault because i'm the one who wrote it um but she i think when she does like go after men it's because she feels that they're a threat right and i almost was I guess if I had to like come up with an answer for that, and I'm not even sure if this is a fully formed picture of what I'm thinking, but um, in a way like Sailor's undoing is that like he has kind of like pushed, been pushing like a metaphor metaphorical rock um, like up a mountain and he's like got this like decent girlfriend and he's trying his best in school and he like, He's the one who like puts on brakes when like Serena comes after him. And then the one time that he doesn't and the one time that he's like, you know what? Forget it. I'm done with this. Forgets his homework, just takes off and like kind of flies off the handle. That's his undoing. Mm -hmm. And that kind of also like what I love. Well, I don't love, but I like really resonate with that scene. And you and I were just talking about this the other day. Um, The scene in Jaws. The very first Jaws where the girl and I, this is so, mm, this is, this is awful, <laughs> but there's a girl and she's like at a party and she like sleeps with a guy and then immediately is like punished by being eaten by a shark. She's eaten by a shark. And I'm like. Karma. Uh, that would never happen to a boy. And I'm like, well, <clears throat> I have a laptop. I can make it happen <laughs> to a boy. <laughs> I, can, I, I can rectify this. Uh -huh. Um. So that was a little bit like that, like that he like kind of like lets go yeah. of like this thing he's been hanging on to and sort of in a way he's like his own worst enemy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I because I agree because I don't think the cops are responding to that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of questions, a lot of a lot of questions. And I'm glad, to that's be clever because left I, to be answered. Yeah. Left to be asked. So. I, 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 there's a lot to this, this little story. So I tried to fit a lot. I mean, we, yeah, I feel like we didn't even like really break the surface just to keep riding this water metaphor pony until mm. it gives out. <laughs> um, so I think that's probably going to do it for us on this, uh, episode here. Mm -hmm. So unless you have anything else to add. Um, no, I just like you, uh, you have this like, you know, privileged, like, you read a lot of my writing, like how just kind of in general, like what is your response to it? Do you like it? Do you not? What, well, how you, do you feel? 
you not know, to put you on the spot. You know that I always praise you and your writing. He has You're the, to say that legally. No, I don't. I don't have to. And you know that I don't have to. Well. And I'm always honest with you. So I've I, I think written out a way that I think you that could this kill is a man a, and get by with it. Um so I mean I wanna I wanna, you know, be pushing you this hard to be writing this stuff and like putting yourself out there if I didn't think that you would be successful doing it. This whole thing is like a back ended way to get me to like have writing out yeah. in the universe. Yeah. Um this is also a way for me to get out there and try to see if I can't make something of myself in the in narr the audiobook narration. Audiobook field. narration. I'm if you, sure if there's you like, like a word for that. Um I don't I of a, a, a vocal uh I forget what they're called. What a voice actor. Yeah, essentially. But um, yeah, I, I mean I this is this is one of my favorites. I actually really love your short stories. So I I think this is forced gonna... me into writing at least one season of them. Yes, I have. Because <laughs> now have. we're doing it now. <laughs> And I will say, too, just kind of like as an upcoming, um, we we started to talk about this a little bit in the beginning, but I have some that are blatant, like the one I'm working on right now. There's like, you know, it's it's a monster. Um, it's pretty obvious right away what's going on to everyone but the main character. Um, but then there are others like the one um, the one that's in like its final draft stages. Um, that's the other thing I like about short stories. You can write like 20 drafts um, and make it just like really tight and perfect. Where with a novel, it's like, well, plot holes galore. I'm just right. going to keep driving. Um, so um, this that one, I don't know if you've read the first draft. It is a little more like, I feel like, mm, I'm not really sure what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And that has a very obvious thing that it was inspired by, if you are. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's going to do it for us today. If you really liked Siren, please, please uh, let us know. Leave a comment in this video. If you liked this, us talking about it, also please leave a comment. Uh, go listen to our other podcasts. We have a, a couple of other things that we do. We're very, we have a very eclectic taste. So check those out. They're on Spotify. They're on iTunes. Subscribe to those. Subscribe to this channel. If you didn't like Siren, just do it all. Don't. Just do it all. If you didn't like Siren, don't tell me. I, I will never write again. Like one even <sighs> mediocre review. If you're someone who feels like they need to go and just like be don't. mean to someone else, don't. like I don't I don't care. Don't. You can be just I don't read the person. comments actually. I, I do read I the direct it. messages on their Instagram. I, I've gotten pretty used They're to They're all for you. And they're all so flattering. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> so I've gotten pretty used to dealing with uh, like hateful comments. So, uh, they don't really get to me these days. So, don't I deal with most of the comments. Yeah. Anyways, if, if you, you have enjoyed, unkind things to if say, if you enjoyed all this, please just let us know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's going to do it for us today. This is Listen When I Tell You Behind the Words. I'm Ryan. And I'm Kate. Until next time. Pasta. Pasta. Pasta.